today I came across an Instagram account. Um, a young lady posted a picture um, with her cleavage out and her caption said that that particular picture she caught a lot of flack from Christians about that shirt they said she shouldn't have been wearing that 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 is inappropriate and so her question was does her attire matter basically saying shouldn't it be the message she preach and not about what she's wearing and so in my experience my bishop Bishop Mitchell G. Taylor, love him to death, said something so interesting, so powerful a few weeks back. He said he don't preach on homosexuality, he don't preach on clothing, fornication. He said he preached the gospel, right? He said because if I preach the gospel, right? then the word will have its way. He said, nothing I say will matter. It's about the gospel. And that was so powerful to me because he's absolutely right, right? The word, the word works. Hebrews in that fourth chapter says, the word of God is quicken, it's quick. Not quick like fast, it's alive. Right. And so therefore, in him saying, I preach the gospel, the gospel, the words have power. He said, because if the gospel doesn't change you, nothing that I can say will ever make a difference. And that was so powerful to me because that is the truth. And so therefore, I have my own experience and I also have scripture. So I'm not here to say, well, you shouldn't dress like this and Christian women should dress like I'm, I'm not here to do that. And so, therefore, I have scripture. I can remember before I had the Holy Ghost, right? I had Mama Costin, right? Church mother. As a baby in Christ, right? There's always somebody that's assigned to help you. Help me learn, right? Here I am, a new believer. I know nothing about church behavior. I know nothing about church conduct, so I have to be taught. I left my job, went to church, it was a Wednesday night Bible study. I had on a mini skirt with a small split in the sky and on the side, blouse, stockings, and my high heels. When I got to the church, as I, before I entered the sanctuary, Mama Costin was standing in the vestibule area. She pulled me aside, went in her blouse, took out safety pins. She buttoned up my split, safety pin my slip, split, gave me a lap cloth, sat me down. And so, of course, I felt like, uh-oh, what did I do, you know? And so after service, she pulled me aside. She said, baby, when is your next day off? She said, because mama want to take you shopping to get you some church clothes. She saying, it's nothing wrong with what you have on because I understand you're just leaving work. She said, but that may be okay for the office, but this is God's house and that's not okay for you to wear here. She said, that's the bishop. Yes, you see the deacons, the elders. She said, but what mama wants you to understand is they're still men, right? I understood that, right? Here she is letting me know from, a, from love. It's coming from a place of love, right? So although she's correcting me, I understand why she's saying what she says. She said, you're a very attractive woman. She said, and we don't want because... Although these are men with titles, they're also somebody's husband. And she said an attractive woman as yourself will cause a man to look. But we don't want to give the enemy no room to come up in here. I understood that. I didn't feel bad. She didn't hurt my feelings. I didn't get upset. 
She helped me understand that there was a certain order in a certain way. She's a mother, Mama Costin. That was her title. And so therefore, here I am, new to the faith, new to the church. I know nothing. And so somebody is here to teach me. She didn't say it to hurt my feelings. She wasn't jealous. You understand? She was showing me how to live right. If I would have taken that, I, I can't even say if I would have taken it personal, what that has said about me. I can't even say that. Because like I said, it came from a place of love. She meant well. Her words were very pleasant. And she helped me understand that even, and I was married at the time. I, I understood exactly what she was saying. And so I put myself in that, and I said, okay. She did just what she said she was going to do. She took me shopping that weekend and brought me the longest skirts. And, you know, it wasn't, they weren't short. I mean, they weren't down to my ankles. She didn't cover me all up. But it was just a little more material. You understand? And so, therefore, I wanted to be in order, right? Because she helped me understand the, the, the goal, right? The, the purpose was to not give the enemy, right, no room to come in. I respect that. Now, let's see what the word say, says. Titus, second chapter, third verse. I'm reading from the King James Version. Scripture reads, The age women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given too much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the younger women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Here, right, we see Paul letting us know the role of the older women. The women that have been saved long enough to be an example, to teach the new believer, right? And so therefore, when I start a job, and this is what I, I, I find so puzzling, and God help me if I've ever been guilty of it, although I, I, I doubt that I had, you know, because I was, a, I was a, a person, I left home at 16. So there was a lot that I did not know. And so therefore, whenever someone older came to, not even just to the church, when someone told me, you get up every morning, you clean your house, you make sure you're not working, so you make sure you take care of the things around the house because you're not in school, you're not. I was young, my first apartment, I didn't know how to run a household, and so therefore, my kids' um, aunt showed me how to make dinner, how to cook, how to clean, how to keep it. So I understood that I'm young and I don't know, so somebody has to teach me. So I was always open to whatever inf uh, advice someone over me, older, was telling me, right? They always say, you give an older person your time, in exchange you'll receive some knowledge. That is the truth. And so I never really took anything personal. And so people will get upset when, and I get it, sometimes some things may come across wrong. People may be guilty of how they say something, but I couldn't get upset with mother because she was teaching me what was right and also being an example I respect what she was telling me and so therefore people get so upset and that's why I don't go to church and that's why but that's foolish to say because of one person I'm not going to do right I'm going to let this person and what this person said stand in the way of me and God I had a gentleman who texted me this was last year I'll never forget it he said, um, I just read some things about this pastor 
And so I don't like some of the things that he said. And you know what? That For that reason right there, that's why I don't go to church. Understand this. The enemy is no fool. In order for him to turn you off about church, he's going to always attack the leader. Right? Because it's not that I go into church to hear the... I'm here to hear the preacher preach, right? But if the enemy can get me to be pissed off or upset with the preacher, now I have an excuse why I don't go to church. You understand what I'm saying? So he's smart. So he always tried to put leaders out there. Whenever I'm scrolling through Instagram, you see they, they'll say something about Bishop Jake. They'll say something about Joel Osteen. You don't hear nothing about anybody sitting in the pews. You don't hear anything about lay members. The pastors are always under attack. But that's just a trick of the enemy. And so here this person is telling me something that he heard this pastor say or he heard something about a pastor and he don't that's why he don't go to church. And so before I respond, thank God for the Holy Ghost. I said, "Now Lord, I really don't know what to say to that." Because it looks like he's having an excuse why he can't go to church. I love God because guess what? God always gives me the right thing to say. Do you know what God told me to tell that young man? God said, you let him know. Yes, God speaks to me. God said, you let him know that that boss that doesn't respect him, right? That boss that's always on him, that same boss that treats him like a child and he is a grown man, God said, ask him why he don't quit his job. When I text him that, that shut that whole conversation down. What am I saying? When the boss piss me off, for a paycheck, I'm going to tolerate it. When the boss says something that I don't like, for my paycheck, I'm going to tolerate it. So why is it when somebody says something it to you in the church, oh, I'm done. I'm not coming back no more. Let me tell you something. I don't go to church for people. I go to church to hear the word. There have been times that some things that came across the pulpit cut me. I'm not going to say that I've never got upset with somebody in church and, and, and said, you know what, I'm not going back. Because I have been there. But I had to understand my relationship with God meant more to me than anything else and so therefore when the enemy seen that he can no longer bother me and move me out of church with people he had to find something else to do because guess what he can't get me with that no more and so it bothers me when people say and this is why I don't go to church and that is why okay you know what I'm sorry you feel that way and don't get me wrong I have been in situations where I've dealt with church hurt. You understand? But those were during my sensitive days when I was wearing my heart on my sleeve. Because I could remember times the boss said something so disrespectful out her face to me in front of everybody. And I did not quit my job. And so that was the point that God showed to because this was the same young man that would always text me pray for me my boss just disrespected me pray for me my boss just called me out pray for me my boss has no respect he treats me like i'm not a man and yet and still he did not quit his job so why would we put though why we have tolerance for that and and because understand this i need to hear what god gave my bishop for me there's a word of healing and deliverance in his mouth. And so therefore, I can't allow the enemy to cause me to miss out on what I need from the man of God. He can't get me with that no more. And so now I've made up in my mind, if it hurts, oh well, I got to pray and keep it moving. Because there are still things that happen. People are not perfect. And so, therefore, it saddens me, it bothers me that people do feel like they come under attack by certain, and it's discouraging. 
But one thing, when I look back today, right, the woman of God that I am, I thank God for every church mother, every preacher, every first lady that corrected me. Because look at me today, I'm still here. You understand? And so they help me stay in check so I can make it, right? It's not something to hurt me, right? It's something to help me. And so sometimes I think sometimes people just need to understand that, you know, one, I pray for the church, that we have more compassion, you know, and that we um, not be so, you know, but if a person is coming from the spirit, right, then we have to understand when something is coming from the spirit. But of course, if it's coming from flesh, is I'm going to take it some type of way. And sometimes I can discern that came from flesh, so I just totally ignore it. You know, but some things, when she pulled me aside, not even, once she buttoned me up, I automatically knew that my attire was inappropriate, right? And so, therefore, the, my attitude was, I want to be in order. And once she gave me the explanation, she helped my understanding of why. And that's what the scripture says. It says that they may teach the younger women. So, she was just doing what the word says. And so I just pray that we stop um, looking for a reason because, like I said, if the enemy sees that he can get you with that, then, you know, he, that's all he got to do and you're gone. You know, don't be moved. Apostle Paul says, um, see that no man be moved by these light afflictions. You know, don't let that stop you. You know, there's going to be some things that you're going to have to encounter. But guess what? I'm never going to put the job above the church you understand because the job is just a paycheck the the church is in place as as a commandment god you know we have to god built the church for me to worship for me to get filled for me to get healed for me to get set, you know delivered for me to get set free you know so i need just like i need the job it's equally important and more so important you understand because that job can shut down and you know where are some of them people that pissed me i don't even i don't you know that boss that was so this was and, and she was just a horrible big old fat woman and you know i just think that it wasn't her i just think that's no i don't think that it was me that she i think she was like that with everybody she was just some people are just not happy and so when the spirit man is not happy then that person is not happy and so therefore i would catch the you know some of that and it, it was irritating but where is she today you understand so jobs they can be gone like that you know i don't think you know when when those i've been a part of two layoffs and when it come time for them to downsize they cut me off like that and so therefore you know why would i tolerate granted you know we have to deal with some things but i would never um quit the job so why would i let something that somebody's telling me for my own good and so you know be encouraged it's not about clothing but there's a reason for everything you understand and so we have to be uh, mindful that the enemy of our soul is always trying to trip us up with something you know because he stays busy and we say that all the time the enemy stay busy, but he wants to catch me slipping you know give him a crack he'll come in you know and so therefore she allowed me to know the main purpose in my attire wasn't for me to take it personally. She was jealous. No, we try to keep the enemy out of our church. And I respect that. And so be encouraged. You know, it's not about attire, but do the best that you can. Don't wear your heart on your sleeve. Something happens. You have an experience in, in the church. You know, leave people up to God. You know, and so I found that oftentimes when, you know, someone would ask me, you want to host um, in this, you know, I've, I've, I've ushered in holy convocations, state meetings. And I can remember an experience where I did something that was wrong and the young, the um, head usher hurt my feelings. She said something and it just, it hurt me so. And I can remember during the opening prayer 
closing my eyes and just asking God to give me the strength to go through that. I wanted to walk right out and leave, but I never left my post. And when the night was over, right as I was getting in my car, she came behind me and she said, Sister, um, that was wrong how I spoke to you. Um, please forgive me. You see, so when you leave people, in, God sees. He, he sees. And so, therefore, I leave people in God's hand because he can deal with them better than I can. What would it have benefit me to just walk out the state? I would have missed the word, right? Because understand, when the preacher, that's the best part of the service because, you know, the Bible says that faith cometh by hearing, right? And so, therefore, that's the music is good, the praise and worship part of the service is great, but the main course is the word, you know, because it's that word that God is going to give to deliver. It's that word that God is going to give to set free. So what would have benefited me to walk out? The enemy has just um, won. He just beat me just that quick. Got me to walk away before I can hear. Could have been a word of deliverance. Could have been a word of healing. And so therefore, I'm not easily moved. Not anymore. And don't you be. Right? Know that you know that you know God will defend you. God will fight the battle. God will take care of those that come at you in the wrong way. Don't move. Let God fight the battle. He will see about you. And so therefore, we leave people in God's hands. Do what you do. If it's from a sincere heart, you know, don't never let what you're doing and if you're if definitely if you're effective, you got to expect some type of um um opposition. And so, therefore, I'm not going to let what somebody say stop me. Not when I know I'm effective. I got to keep going because I have a greater um, purpose, a goal in mind. And so, when the enemy shows up, you got to expect him. That's how you know you're doing something. Be blessed. Stay blessed. Till next time.